Welcome to the Business of Architecture Photography Q&A. This is the premiere of what I, I hope to be a fairly reoccurring video series where I just simply share my, my input, tips, and advice around the business side of being an architecture photographer. And if you have a question that you'd like me to address in a future video, drop it in the comments below and start it off with the words business question. All right, so let's get into it. Question number one was submitted over a YouTube comment from uh, YouTube handle FWA54321. Uh, it says, how do you price your photography as it pertains to brands? Allow me to explain. I recently shot a home that was staged. There were a number of images that I shot that were really great that included brands, for example, candles, vases, appliances, etc., that I would like to contact the company and ask if they would be interested in purchasing the image. Is this something that you've had success with? If so, what is your pricing approach? Not asking for your numbers, but instead more on the process of pricing, especially when you are just starting out. Thanks. All right, so I made a few notes here around this question. Number one, I'm assuming you're talking about them licensing the image, not necessarily purchasing the image outright, even though that's what the question said. A lot of photographers still make the mistake of, uh, hey, I wanna see if you want to purchase an image. The implication there is that if you purchase an image, you're kind of saying you also will own the image, which means own the copyright. And I'm assuming you don't mean that. Just be careful for you photographers out there when you are approaching companies to do, to do this, make sure you say, purchase a license to use the image, not purchase the image itself. So anyway, okay, so a few notes along this. Number one, make sure your commissioning client, the client who hired you for the job and possibly the homeowner, if, if it's a residential property, make sure that they are okay with you reaching out to some of these other companies uh, to potentially see if they wanna license any of your images. Uh, if not, if your original client and or the homeowner wants that completely off the table and they, they're not comfortable with it, you may want to consider dipping your toes into uh, the, I would say, exclusivity. Uh, I won't get into the weeds of this too much, but basically what's happening is if your client says, no, I, I completely forbid you from doing this, they're now taking away your ability as a photographer to make additional income from these images. So you may need to charge accordingly for that. You may need to charge maybe uh, two times or three times your original uh, quoted maybe normal price because that ability is, is now gone. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna assume that your client's perfectly fine with it. If it's a residential property, they're perfectly fine with it. Everyone's good on that end. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is do not base your licensing rates completely off of what you charged your original client. I'm gonna run a scenario here. Actually, let's use kind of an extreme scenario. Let's say um, we're gonna start off in January. Let's say you're a real estate photographer and you photograph a property for a listing. And uh, let's say it's just a model home. We don't have to deal with homeowners here. Maybe it's just the real estate agent who originally uh, commissioned you for the shoot. And you, I don't know, maybe charge $300 and you deliver 30 images of the property. Now, if you do a breakdown, if you took that total and break it down per image, that comes out to about $10 per photo. Let's go extreme. Let's say you are the priciest real estate photographer and you charged $1,000 and maybe you delivered 50 images. Well, now your per image breakdown is, is $20 per photo. All right, so you shoot that project in January. By February, the house is sold. The images are off. MLS, pretty much everything's all said and done. Let's say summer of that same year, for one reason or another, you end up coming in contact with, say, a national brand that had their products in that, that property. Say it was like GE Appliances or maybe Delta Faucets. Come to find out, they want to license one of those photos. And they want to use them for just kind of standard use, uh, website, social media, catalogs, brochures, etc. Even though this company is only asking for one photo, you do not base the pricing of that one image off of the, the per image breakdown of what the original client paid. So if GE Appliances only wants one of these photos, you do not charge them $20 for the one image. What you have to do, and I strongly encourage every architecture photographer to do this, is to do your own research and find out 
what these images are worth to these companies. So many photographers are looking for the shortcut answer and are just turning to other photographers to say, hey, what do you charge? And I'll just charge that. That's not a great way to structure your pricing. You may be surrounded in your area by photographers who are not very business savvy. Let's say you get a photographer who says, oh, you need to charge two times the per image breakdown of what the original client paid. Okay, great. That means now GE Appliances gets that photo for $40. That's still just a steal. Now, Mike Kelly and I did do a very deep dive into this subject on the Business of Architecture Photography video series. And of course, I'm going to pitch you that series on this q and I'd almost be remiss if I didn't. If you're interested in taking a peek at the video series, again, it's a video series all about the business side of architecture photography. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So long story short, your licensing pricing for the most part should not be based just completely on what the original client paid. You're going to need to find out some specifics on what this company, the, the company who wants to license the photo, you have to find out what they want to do with it or may want to do with it. Even if it's national companies, what national company A may do with your photo might be very different than what national company B is going to do with it. So you have to charge accordingly. And what you may find out is in the eyes of some of these companies, your images may be worth hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars. All right, question number two. This one comes again over YouTube. Um, it was submitted by, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Wyman Gentry. Question is, how do you come up with pricing for your work? I mainly do real estate work and the usage is way different. In real estate, it seems more transparent what competitors are charging and therefore easier to find the bar for what the market will bear. I don't find this to be easy or transparent in the world of architecture. Love to hear your thoughts. Very true. A lot of, um, architecture and design uh, photographers play this number really, really close to the chest. I will say this, a big help to the industry as a whole was an article that Mike Kelly released. Uh, it was in February of 2019 on the website, AP Almanac. And I'm again, I'm going to link to that article uh, directly in the description of that, this video. Uh, I'm gonna summarize here. Um, Mike's advice here is so sound. Some of the numbers, I'm gonna admit are probably outdated, even though the article was written in 2019 at no fault of Mike's, but because of inflation, the cost of everything has gone up. If your pricing right now is the same as it was in 2019, something's wrong. <laughs> you need to take another look at your pricing and adjust accordingly. Let's go into a few points that Mike mentions in, in this. And I, I agree with this 100%. The first point he mentions here is if you want to charge a lot, you have to be good. If you want to charge a day rate of several thousands of dollars, I'm sorry, and I, I sincerely mean this not to insult anybody, your quality of work cannot appear to be the same as a typical run and gun real estate photographer. And it's a hard fact that I had to face too, because at one point in time, I was a real estate photographer. I did it straight for like three to four years. Mike goes on to mention some factors that you need to consider. Uh, I alluded to it before. Clearly, you need to take an honest look at your skills, your location as well, and your reputation. I think a big part of this is your location. Now, if Mike Kelly had a clone, or if I had a clone say working out in LA and Mike Kelly had a clone that was working here in Kansas City, our pricing is, is gonna be very different because the cost of so many things are very, very different. I know when someone asks this question, they're looking for numbers. So fortunately, Mike does give some solid numbers uh, in this article. I encourage you to take a look at this article. You wanna scroll all the way down, take an honest look at yourself and where you are in your career and base it according off this. Now, that being said, if you were looking to establish, I guess I'll put it this way, take all these numbers and maybe add 10 to 15% to them just to kind of at least to take into consideration the way things cost more now than they did even back in 2019. And to kind of pull back the curtain even more, I would venture to guess the majority of architecture and design photographers are basing their pricing structure this way. They're typically doing some sort of day rate or they'll call it a creative fee, and then doing a per image cost along that, uh, along those same lines as well. So I hope that helps. It's a fantastic article. 
full disclosure, it's kind of what I based my pricing on when I was transitioning out of real estate. And um, yeah, I had to take an honest look at where I was at that point in time in relation to architecture and design photography in relation to the competition in my area and price accordingly. All right, so question number three is not a question that was submitted to me. I saw it in a Facebook group and asked the person who uh, submitted the question with their permission, can I use this question uh, to talk about in uh, this first video that I'm creating? And I think it's, it's very, very timely because this is a problem that's not going away, but there's a ton of questions around this. And uh, it was a photographer named Melissa Kelsey. And she said, hey, I'm going through Pixie to see who is using my work. Any tips on who you go after for money versus who isn't worth it? Do you just send takedown notices to the random blogs like 20 Amazing Bathroom Ideas and then go after the manufacturers, suppliers, et cetera, who are using your photos on their websites? What do you do about Pinterest? How's even though you begrudgingly allowed your clients to upload there. All right, I have some notes on this. And since we are kind of talking about copyright, clearly I probably need to put the disclaimer out. I am not an attorney, so don't take anything I say as official legal advice. This is just the advice I'm giving you as a freelance photographer. Since most of the viewers of this channel, uh, based on the analytics, are from the U.S., the United States, I'm going to assume a couple things. One, you are also working in the United States, and two, that if you are any kind of seasoned professional, you have your work registered with the U.S. Library of Congress. Your work is registered. There's still a handful of photographers who say, oh, you don't need to register your work. <sighs> anyway, to me, that's the same argument I mentioned in another video of a someone saying, oh, you can drive your car without car insurance. I've been doing it for years and have, have not had a problem at all. Register your work. Just do it. I know it's a cumbersome process, but just do 10 minutes worth of research and you will find out that there are law offices, attorneys, services out there that will register your work for you. Okay, so back to the question. Here's my opinion. If it is a company or business that is using one of your images to market, promote, or sell a good or service, yes, I think it's worth looking into which means that there are some instances where I don't think it it deserves a whole lot of your time to look into. Number one being, yes, some of those uh, aggregator uh, blogs or even aggregator sites. You'll see some of these sites that are, you know, 15 great kitchen ideas or something like that. I'll say this, uh, if you want to pursue for any uh, compensation, you're probably not going to see a dime for it. My advice would, if you want it removed, uh, send some sort of, I think it's a DMCA takedown. Yeah, DM, DMCA notice or takedown. Um, you could just contact the writer of the blog or website or developer of the website directly, ask them to take it down. More often than not, they're just going to ignore you or tell you to pound sand. So that's why I don't think blogs are again, in my opinion, necessarily worth your time to go after. And unfortunately, the other one is social media reposts. Now, I did make an entire video on this subject uh, several months ago. I might, might have even been last year. But what I mean is, if another company, even if it's a national, massive, worldwide company, let's say, and it's reposting one of your images, you're probably not going to see a dime if you try to go after them, even through your attorney. I'm still finding that a lot of attorneys are all over the place in their opinions on how they would handle this. So setting attorneys aside, my advice is if you see a national brand who's using one of your images, maybe take that as an opportunity to potentially reach out to them, see if they want to license the image legitimately. You know, if not, then politely ask them to take it down. Again, if they ignore you or they tell you to, you know, go fly a kite, Instagram and Facebook have some forms you can fill out, um, copyright infringement forms that you can fill out that um, let them know, hey, XYZ account is using one of my images. They are infringing on my copyright. And they might, might ask you a couple of additional questions to kind of prove and verify who you are. And if you're able to do that, they'll take it down as soon as they can. Every situation is different and there's multiple factors to consider what to do when your copyright is infringed on. And a few of them, again, in my opinion, are this. First one is, is the company who infringed on your copyright, are they local to your area? Second one is, are they connected in some way 
to one of your clients who maybe originally commissioned you for a specific shoot. And another factor to consider is, did a company or business use one of your images out of ignorance or did they flat out steal it? So in the original question it asked, do you go after the manufacturers, suppliers, et cetera, who are using your photos on their websites? Typically, I don't like to go after them guns a blazing and try to blitz them and, you know, take an aggressive approach. I tend to take the philosophy of you attract more flies with honey than vinegar. I think that's how it goes. Now that does not work with every scenario, but I would rather try to handle the situation with a kind, tactful approach than come after them with an aggressive one. At the very least, if these companies ignore you or tell you to buzz off, you can tell yourself, hey, I tried to be nice. And if your work is registered and let's say it's a pretty well-established brand or company, it may be worth having a phone conversation or a sit-down uh, in-person meeting with a, an attorney who's familiar with uh, intellectual property law. But like I said before, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that in our video series, The Business of Architecture Photography, that Mike Kelly and I, again, do a very, very deep dive into this situation or when your work is infringed upon, and we relay some specific scenarios that we've run into that I would say are pretty common for a lot of photographers in this genre. Well, guys, I hope that video helped. I'm fully aware that my answers are not the correct ones for every single situation. In fact, most of them are opinions. I would venture to guess there's probably a lot of photographers watching this video who completely disagree with me, and if so, let me know. I, I'm open to it. And again, if you have a question that you'd like me to address in a future video, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Start off with the words business question, and I will do my best to try to answer them in the future. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A. Photo. I appreciate you taking the time to watch uh, this video, and we'll see you on the next one.